السلام عليكم رسول الله ما بعد السلام شو ان شاء الله we're going to take some benefit from the Quran if you notice the Quran when you read it you're going to find out that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always speaks about the believers and the disbelievers and he speaks about the believers and the hypocrites he speaks about paradise and fire. Always. Like the two surahs that I read, <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he spoke about two categories of people. The disbelievers and the believers. And the second one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that the one who transgressed the bound, as for the one who transgressed the bound, and he favored this world over the next. Because when you look at it, the person who favored this world is a person who's not going to work for his akhirah. The akhirah will be the last thing that he's going to think about. Al-Iyadu so you find this person, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Himarun bin Nahar, Jifatun bin Layl. He's a donkey during the day. And he's a carcass during the night, Allah. Dead body. He wakes up early morning, not to pray Fajr, to go chase after this world, Allah. So that person, he will have nothing in the hereafter but the, but, but, but the, the help. So the point is, the Quran teaches you compliance. Teaches you compliance. How to comply with the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when it comes to the theory, everybody can, can recite the Quran. There's nobody who cannot recite the Quran. They, they, when it comes to an nadariyat, the theories, everybody can speak. But when it comes to tatbiqiyat, you know I mean? Compliance and, and doing what Allah commands you to do, you're going to find out that a few people are like that. It's like, for example, somebody can tell you about swimming. He has a book about how to swim and all that. You throw him in the ocean, he will drown. <laughs> he will drown. Because everyone can speak. But when it comes to actually compliance and doing what Allah commands you to do, that's when you see the difference. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, He says, The one who created death and life, because we were dead, and then Allah created us. Then, so, to see which one is best indeed, you see. This is very, very important matter that we need to focus on. That not only the recitation of the Quran, but also to implement the Quran. Because the Quran is our law, our legislation. The Quran was sunnah. We practice it. We follow the way of Allah. And this messenger Muhammad sallallahu we comply with the commandment. We obey Allah and we obey the messenger. And Prophet ﷺ, he said, كل أمتي يدخلون الجنة إلا من أبا. أو من يأبى يا رسول الله. قال من 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 عصى من من أطاعني دخل الجنة ومن عصاني فقد أبى. He said, صلى الله عليه وسلم, all of my followers will enter Jannah except those who refuse. They said, who would refuse the messenger of Allah? This, this is something strange. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whoever obeys me, he will enter the Jannah. Whoever disobeys me, he has refused. Allah Akbar. And today I want to share with you, I think, well, I, I think I told Brother Adam before, but there is a beautiful story about this Imam. And the reason I'm, I'm mentioning this story to you, brothers, it is a story of taqwa. It is a story of a taqwa. 
taqwa bears fruits, not only in this world, but also in the hereafter. So it always boils down to practicality, to act upon it. It's not just words. Anyone can say what they want. Recite Quran, recite Hadith, they shout. La. It has to be implementation. At-tatbiq, al-amal bil-Quran, al-amal bil-Sunnah. Act upon it, not just... Because a lot of people, when someone dies, they recite the Quran. Okay, what's the big deal now? The Quran is not for the dead. The Quran is for those who are living, so that they can benefit from it, they can implement it. طيب. This Imam, I'm going to share with you, you hear his name Allah. I mean, some, of, some of you may not be familiar with him. We heard his name. Many times scholars, they mention his name. I don't know if you brothers are familiar with his name. Ibn Hubayra. Have you ever heard this name? You heard. Okay. You heard his name? You've never heard it. Have you ever heard this? Ibn Hubayra. No. Ibn Hubayra, he's from Iraq. And in particular, he's from Baghdad. Because Baghdad, you understand, Baghdad had uh, produced a lot of scholars from Baghdad. Baghdad, Imam Ahmed was there. Imam Ahmed was there. Abu Hanifa was there. Sufyan ibn Sa'id al-Tawri was there. Uh, Al-Fudayb ibn Iyad, he was there. Uh, Sufyan ibn Uyayna, actually he is from Iraq, but he moved to uh, Mecca. He stayed in, he remained in Mecca until he died. And there are, Abdullah ibn Mubarak is from, from that area too. Ibn Hubayr, rahimahullah, he was born in 459 Hijri. And he died in, um, he died in 600, no, he died in, in 600 and, um, no, 560, 560, rahimahullah. Now, Ibn Hubayr, he shares with us his story. So we can learn from him, you know? He said, when I was a young man, I used to work from after Fajr until Duhr. Then, I will go after Duhr and sit with the scholars, learn knowledge, beneficial knowledge. So his day was divided between his work and knowledge. Allahu Akbar. How many people do this? Very few. Now, he said, my salary, I will divide it into three parts. I will give my dad one third. I will give the landlord one third for the rent, and the other third for, for me and my cost of living and all that. He said, there was some time I went through some hard time. So I could not find a job. So the landlord, he said, you have three days. If you don't bring the money, you, you're going to go to prison. Because at that time, you know, it was different. Like that, then, you know, they, they wouldn't give you like a notice and stuff like that. So three days, that's it. He said... I went the, the first day looking for a job. I couldn't find it. Second day, I went to the king's court, Diwan al-Malaki. So looking for a job, I couldn't find it. Then the third day, I packed up all my luggage, and I left that area for fear that they would lock me up. So he said, I had all the world on top of my head. So I kept walking, and I did not know where I was going. Kept walking, walking, walking. Until I reached this dilapidated and this run-down house. So I put my, my hand on the door, and the door opened Im- immediately. There was, a, there was an old man. He was lying on his bed. And he said, son, come in. Come in. He said, son, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent you here. Look, I am dying. I'm going through the agony of death right now. I need one favor from you. 
So I said to him, what can I do for you? He said, can you go to the market and get me some grapes? I am in the mood to eat some grapes before I die. SubhanAllah. I said, don't worry. Don't worry, uncle. I get you. He said, I went to the market. I asked the, the, the vendor, I said, how much is the grape? said, one dirham. One dirham back then was like, it had value, you know? So I said, sir, I don't have any money to pay you, but I'm going to mortgage my, my clothes. Rahm, you say rahm. I'm going to mortgage my clothes. So he took the clothes, he gave me the, the grapes. He said when he, he gave me the grapes, I started running for fear that the man will die before he eats the grape. Subhanallah, this man is amazing. So he got, he got there, he gave him the grapes. He ate the grapes. He said, uh, son, go to that corner of the room and dig up there. So I dug up, and I found a container that has gold and money. So I brought it to him. He said, son, I'm going to tell you, this money belongs to my brother. And me and him, we used to be big vendors, big traders, and we used to make a lot of money. We used to go to India and Sindh. Sindh, which is like Lahore area, that area. So we used to go to India and Sindh, Bilad Sindh. And we used to sell silk and cotton. But we were always chased by robbers. We were always chased by robbers. They were always after us. So one time we were in a house. I told my brother, why don't you give me your money so that I can put it in a safe place? That way the robbers, you know, they may come any time. So he gave me his money. I put it in a safe place. They came. They came. They killed some of the traders. They took the money. They did all that. He said, in the morning, I woke up at the heat of the sun that hit, that hit my, my face. I looked for my brother among the dead. I couldn't find him. I looked for him among the living. I could not find him. And I have not seen him for the last 20 years. He said, son, this money is permissible for you. Halal, take it. So he said, I stayed with him, and I gave him the shahada until he passed away. Then I called someone to help me, and I buried him. Then I went back and it retrieved all that money. So now I, I'm, I'm going to go back to my locality. So before I could make it there, I have to take the ferry boat. Because the, 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 they have the Euphrates and the, and, and the Tigris. Naam. Dejla wal Furat. We say Dejla wal Furat. Nahar Dejla wal Furat. So the Euphrates and the, and the Tigris rivers. So he said, I was looking, and I saw this, this man, the owner of a ferry boat. He looked uh, very poor, and his clothes were very shabby and things like that. So I sympathized with him. So I said, let me, let me uh, go with him. Maybe I can help him out financially because of this money that I have. So I got, and I started talking to him. He opened up, and he started telling me about... He's passed. He, he turned out to be the brother of the man who passed away. <laughs> Subhanallah. I said, sir, I have something for you. This is your money. Yeah. He said, your brother, he told me the whole story. He gave him his money. Subhanallah. He said, no, but you have to take some. He said, no, 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 no. This is your money. Take it. He said, but you have to excuse me with one dirham. Because I, I bought grapes for your brother before he passed away. Look at the taqwa, subhanallah. Look at the taqwa, al-wara, subhanallah. He said, now I came out from uh, Baghdad poor because I didn't have a job. And I'm going to go back poor now, subhanallah. But look. He got back. I saw the military. They called me. I was a little bit nervous. Maybe they're going to lock me up because of the landlord, right? They said, where have you been? We've been looking for you. We have a job for you. 
subhanallah. Said uh, in the king court, king's court, Diwan al Malaki, king's court, w one of the scribes, the al Kutab, the ones who write down for the king and things like that, he died. So we want you to replace him. Subhanallah. So he replaced, I, he said, I replaced him and they gave me one month in advance. Right? So I went and paid off all the, the rent. And then I, little by little, until I got promoted to be the judge. And from there, I became the minister. That's why they say, Al-Wazir Ibn Hubayra. Now you know the rest of the story. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make, make us from those that follow the way of Allah and his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah make us from ibadihi al-muttaqeen wa awliyaihi al-muqarrabeen ma'a al-nabiyin wa al-siddiqin wa al-shuhada wa al-salihin wa hasuna wa laika rafiqa wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.